All right, so tonight I'm gonna to walk through a typical night of being on call in the hospital. I used to bring all this stuff when I was on call, but now I really distilled it down to just a few items. Obviously you need your stethoscope, but other than that, just some basic toiletries. Really important to have an extra pair of socks and underwear. Uh, you wouldn't believe how stinky your feet get on call, it's weird. And deodorant, of course. And finally, make sure you bring your cell phone charger. And if you got one that has like a little external battery, like this one, which I, I broke, but it's got a battery in it, that can also be a lifesaver because you can charge your battery on the go. And I usually bring a iPad or a laptop or something for when I have downtime, I could do some reading or whatever. You will soon come to fear this site. All right, so this is your typical average call room. You get the single bed, extremely uncomfortable, small desk, telephone, a locker to store your stuff and this call room is very unique and it actually has a window most of them are actually more like prison cells one thing you'll find is that hospital pillows are just the worst i mean look at this thing look how thin it is there it's not even a hand width thin and usually you only get one thankfully someone left this normal pillow here which i was able to steal for the night awesome also, if you know you're going to be in a hospital that doesn't have food available overnight, make sure you bring a snack because it can be really crappy when it's 2.30 in the morning and there's nowhere to get food at all. Some people like to bring a spare change of clothes, but me personally, I'm a big fan of scrubs because you don't have to worry about it. Plus, going back to that whole thing about getting stinky on call, if you get stinky, just change your scrub shirt, no problem. So it's 10.30 now, been at work for 15 hours or so, still have the rest of the night to go unfortunately. Things have been going okay, I have one patient with diabetic ketoacidosis but she's doing reasonably well. The only crappy thing now is we have to follow her glucose and electrolytes almost every hour for the rest of the night so you know, I'm going to be up checking that but um, you know, otherwise can't complain, things are going okay. It's midnight now, time to go see another consult. Made it to the morning. Now it's just time to hand over and get out of here. So because I've been cooped up in this hospital for 23 and a half hours so far, I decided to make use of this beautiful garden and have breakfast outside. This Tim Morton's breakfast sandwich was a tragic, tragic mistake. This is the third best thing about being post-call. All right, so it's almost 11 a.m. I've been at the hospital for oh, 27 hours. No, almost 28 hours now. Uh, time to go home. Yes. This is the second best part of being post call. Getting to wash all of all that hospital grime. And what's the best thing about being post call? This, your own bed. So after spending a night in the hospital on one of those uncomfortable mattresses, getting woken up by a pager every 30 minutes, let me tell you there's nothing better than coming home and crawling into your own bed to get some post-call snoozing in. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So see you guys later.